You're listening to the Soju Talk Nation podcast, episode 12. On today's episode, we talk IU, Sejong, This Week in Music, and the Worst Superpower World Cup. So sit back and chill with friends. You're listening to The After Show with the Soju Talk Nation. Welcome to the Soju Talk Nation podcast, a chill discussion on this week in the Soju Talk Nation. We're recording on Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. I'm your host, Crispy, and joining me again this week is Therese. Welcome, Therese. Oh, thank you so much. Some announcements. Uh, Koala is currently dying from school and academic responsibilities. She really wanted to make it this week. Uh, she had, did have a lot to say uh, about certain topics, but she just really couldn't uh, gather the yeah. mental fortitude <laughs> to process <laughs> anything aside from school and her lack of sleep. So uh, we wish her well. And, you know, luckily for us, we have a, we have a true influencer this week. She, uh, oh, gosh. she has uh, <laughs> leveled up. She, she surprised us. Um, Therese opened up a TikTok at yeah. Soju Talk fan. So clips from the main show. It's it's pretty popping. I mean, you guys should check it out. Um, we post on the server uh, when when she does post. Either she'll post it or I'll post it or someone will post it. We have a bot for that. Um, yeah, <laughs> the the videos have been excellent. They've been really funny, and um, yeah, I think it just really adds to. You know, kind of flavoring the, the 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 soju talk main show goodness that we already have. Uh, how how would yeah. you describe that, Therese? Yeah, I just wanted to highlight the crew because they're they have their funny moments, obviously, <laughs> and um, a lot of people aren't willing to sit through the full episode. Um, so I was like, oh, they should know like our toilet jokes and inside jokes and. <laughs> I just wanted to showcase the stupid little clips that they provide us. Yeah, no, it's really awesome that you did that. And it's, I mean, I think it's super successful already. So, you know, hopefully we, we grow it some more. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm just like having fun learning how to edit videos in the most simplistic way I can. And, um, I enjoy listening to the podcast, so why not? Yeah, I mean, it just adds a little bit extra texture to the things that you're already doing. So nice job, Therese. Um, Thank you. Moving on to celebrating the nation this week with birthdays. We've got one on April 1st. We have the mod from Denmark, the very tall man who likes to carve spoons. The um, Viking. The Viking. Uh, one of the Blinks. Yes, he is a Blink. Uh, Joe Cab. So I wish Yay. him a very happy birthday on April 1st. Um, yeah, no, his birthday is not an April Fool. You can make it's that real joke, birthday. But it's not <laughs> funny. <laughs> it's not as funny as you think it is. Just um, It's been done. Yeah, but yeah, wish him a happy birthday. And... Um, you know, on the server, just, you know, greet everyone with a little bit of extra positivity because I feel like we all could use it nowadays with, uh, I mean, we're over a year into the pandemic. It does feel like some, it's hitting some people harder than others. You know, we could all do with a little extra positivity here and there. So, yeah, be, yeah, yeah. be kind to each other. All right, now, since we got all that emotional stuff out of the way, uh, let's get to the actual show. So <laughs> this week in Soju Talk Music, we have three songs. We have IU with Lilac and Coin. So she released a double title track for her for her brand new album. And we have the lovely Sejong with Warning. And these two... These Are two they games. officially both title tracks? I thought she just made... A B-side music video. 
they they said double title tracks on the main show, so I assume that was that's what it was as well. Um, she oh, is okay. promoting both of them, I think, or maybe it might be just the first week comeback stages where she's doing both songs. But both stages are very elaborate and very um, entertaining. Yeah, very entertaining and very like budgeted as if they were title tracks. So, um, so yeah, let's get right into it with IU and Lilac, the first song she released with the music video. Okay, so the crew had a lot to say about the song. I took down a lot of notes from what they had to say. Uh, but Therese, let's start off with you. What did you think about the song and music video when it dropped? I loved it. <laughs> I love um, IU, obviously. And I think it was like very sweet. And also like just relatable because you see her at the train station and it's obviously a transitional song and i think we can all sort of relate to that since um the pandemic has put us all up in these crazy positions um everyone's sort of moving around in their lives so i really love it i love how it sounds i love her vocals and the mixing and her dancing and the visuals of the music video, I love it. Yeah, um, Doug put it as it's a vibe, and it's a hundred percent a vibe. I couldn't agree <laughs> more. Um, Lilac is one of those songs where, I mean, as they said on the main show, it's it captures a very classic IU feel, but you can also tell that there's a maturity and there's a refinement to who she is as an artist in totality, as as far as like what I experienced. Um, because oftentimes like you get a piece of music and it's like, okay, you have the music and then there's the music video and then there's the performer it's her, herself or himself. And mm -hmm. there is a little bit of mental work to put it all together. Not to say like that's a difficult thing or that's a challenge for, for, for anyone, but with IU, it all just seems to flow so easily and seamlessly, <clears throat> but yeah. also telling a deeper story than perhaps, um, that perhaps most songs and music videos intend to, right? And I don't know, I just... Well, let me ask you a couple of things with, with what Warren had mentioned. So Warren went into pretty, uh, pretty, a pretty in-depth discussion on the symbolism and the story that she was telling in the song. Um, how did that hit you? And did you notice a lot of those things as you were watching the music video as well? Uh, to be honest, I did not. I just saw IU being IU, and I was like, wow, she's so gorgeous and talented. <laughs> but <laughs> as soon as the crew started talking about like what this song means, um, I did notice on the train platform she had her old albums um, listed, and I didn't put it together that this was about her 20s, but I definitely knew that she liked writing about times in her life so um it all makes sense but other than that uh before i heard the crew talk about it i was watching her interview on music bank and she herself said that this was meant to be a breakup song um between two people so i think it's definitely interpretive and i think warren was right about this being more about her 20s um but if that's what she intended it to be as a breakup song, it works too. So <laughs> I love the symbolism behind transitional songs. Yeah. Transitional periods in your life can account for all the experiences you've had. Right. I mean, 20, your twenties, that decade in someone's life is very formative. Um, it, I mean, to me, when I think of coming of age, coming of age doesn't necessarily mean a teenager going into adulthood. It's transitional periods in your life, whether that's um, your 20s to 30s or even into your adulthood, into um, middle aged adult like adulthood. So it, coming of age to me is always a symbolic period in someone's life where they've just gone through a lot and that ultimately they will change and they take a moment to reflect on that change. And I feel like that's what Lilac so beautifully accomplished with like such a pop like sensational like ability and feel right where it's like if you are a person who just loves Ayu's music and just wants to feel 
a certain positive type of way, this song will do that for you. But also, if you will need it, it's there for you that you will go through things in life. You will undoubtedly change. And here is how Ayu is reflecting on that. So I'm sure she's gone through romance and breakups. Um, unfortunately, with Korean culture, we're not going to hear about it, but that's okay. <laughs> that's another conversation for another time. But right. <laughs> like, you can definitely tell that all of her experiences painted how she uh, how she developed the song. And how I think she you're right. allowed the song to live. Go ahead. I think it's interesting how her music kind of grounds her because most people you think of their persona as a singer and you know their stage presence but with IU her songs it kind of gives you a better glimpse into who she is as a person rather than um who she is as an artist which I guess is one and the same but <laughs> um I also really liked how she emphasize this like fleeting moment where she says like love me only till the spring where like the petals are falling and things are ending and it's like you can really appreciate things more when they're temporary yeah i love that sentiment it's um it's a very i don't know it, i think it does capture a lot of this idea of like growth and change with spring and i mean she she's dropping it you know, end of March during Yay. a transitional period in, you know, throughout the year for a, a huge, lot of people. Go ahead. And that's a huge thing in Korean music, right? Is mm -hmm. um, seasonal songs. Yes. <laughs> seasonal songs and change. And um, yeah, just a lot of symbolism depending on like the, t the time of the year and like the calendar. Um, anything else about what the crew said that stood out to you? Uh, nothing to criticize. To quote Warren. Yeah, that was that was amazing. I think that was a really nice bright moment for everyone to kind of just <laughs> up and feel the same kind of way. Um, let's move on now to the second song she released with Coin. All right, Therese. Uh, this was, this this song is a little bit funkier. Um, I when I listened to it, I I had a very like theatrical funk feel, where it's like she mm. was on stage, um, perhaps. Um, like a stage show, like a Vegas lounge, and then obviously oh, with, the, with the casino visuals. Um, how did all of the how did all the visuals and her performance hit you in the song? I think it was very sexy, very cool. Um, I love like her portraying herself as a gambler in the music video because. Um, it's like usually when you see that in a music video, it's just to look cool, but you can tell there's definitely a sense of like, yeah, she's partying, yeah, she's going crazy, but there's definitely something on the line here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those where uh, I agree that a lot of music videos kind of contrive like the cool factor of everything. But with this music video, there is a purpose to why she's cool why she has the coin um it does tell a story it's it does feel like a little bit of a different story from lilac um mm, more just definitely. like a fun i don't even know and it's, it's a different go ahead it's a different um sound for her too uh i mean she's rapping in this which i i haven't ever heard her rapper if i do <laughs> i don't really remember much of it so i think it's also kind of talking about how this is a risk for her as an artist yeah i mean just like yeah i mean the rap... gambling on new sounds hey that, hey look at you pulling, <laughs> pulling the metaphors right out of the song and the, the visuals um so i did want to touch on the rapping a little bit so they mentioned uh, a few things um anita was a little bit iffy about it doug and warren were more positive or had uh connected with it more and I wanted to ask you, being a non-Korean language speaker, um, how does rap typically feel to you? And how, if you can, like discern like what rap styles um, and techniques are being used within a song? Um, so specifically with IU, um, was there anything that stood out to you that was unique or that was prototypical of like a rap technique? 
I think it was very pleasant to listen to, and I actually do have a lot of, I, I usually have problems with a lot of female, um, I, female idol rappers, specifically. Uh, just like recently, it seems you can tell how they are not that experienced in rapping, the way that their tone sort of like goes down, where they say, I want to go to the mall, blah, 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 blah. And it's very annoying to listen to for me, even though I'm not um, really rap heavy. I don't listen to a lot of rap um, on my own, but you can tell when it's more amateur. And with IU, it's like she could be amateur, but she's not showing. She's just using her normal voice and she's like talking in a hushed tone. And I think it works really well. Yeah, and then we talked about this a little bit this week um, offline, just with how IU is is this person who's been around for so long with so much experience and so much, um, I guess, in- entertainment experience. And I wanted to ask you a couple of things about her performance, charisma, and you had brought this up, an it factor. So it, mm-hmm. when you see her on stage, there's something that absolutely stands out about her where she's glowing she captures your attention and whatever song it is she's doing whether or not you 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 love the song you're still captivated by the fact that she's performing it um right what would you pinpoint about iu as being her it factor if you can Hmm, i think you definitely touched on it with her charisma like she just has that welcoming sort of personality and face where she smiles at you and you think, Oh my gosh, this is my new best friend. (laughs) But um, on stage, I think it's interesting. It's kind of like she shares the stage with her fans. She's not making it about her. It's just about like the music and like, it's inviting you to get up and dance with her. Yeah. I think, yeah, you, well, well put, Therese. You know, I I don't really have very much to elaborate <laughs> on. I, I did have more to say, but I think you put it so 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 very clearly. Um, I did <laughs> want to like highlight the inviting nature of like who IU is as a person, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yes, she's an idol. Yes, she's an entertainer, and there you know there is a sense of like separation from um, her as a person versus who we know from the person in the spotlight. But at the same time, there is that welcoming inviting um i guess like vibe to her where it's just like you you want to i don't know how to say it you want to be around her and not in a like mm-hmm. creepy way but like it, is, it feels just very <laughs> natural like oh like i can have iu in my life in like music and in movies and in dramas and it just feels like she captures a sense of calm with whatever mm. projects she attaches herself to. And I feel like that's something that I don't know if she's intentionally conveying and or how she's intentionally conveying it. Or if <laughs> right. she just has a natural ability to capture people's attention in such a uh such a you know, calming way. So Yeah, I she has such a brand as, you know, the nation's little sister and she's so good at portraying someone that's like innocent but also very savvy and it must be exhausting trying to keep that image up (laughs) like (laughs) i can't even pretend to be cool (laughs) how does she just do it (laughs) i mean if if we all knew then we'd all be like are you I guess <laughs> that's and then what the makes world would be a better place. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it really just goes to show like how unique and special she is as an entertainer. And yeah. like they said on the show, this is, you're seeing someone at their peak, at their highest, at yeah. their highest power. I don't know if final level is there yet, final form, but I mean, I, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see in 10 years what that form of IU will look like. Um, because in Korean entertainment, you can be relevant for that long, right? Um, depending mm-hmm. on who you are and how you manage your career and just like the the avenues in which you take to keep yourself relevant. And it does feel like IU is not slowing down. 
I know 10 years from now is a long <laughs> time to look down the road, but I mean, I can't imagine people. Um, I'm sure she'll want to take a break eventually, yeah. but <laughs> she's doing very well. Yeah, she's doing Just great. Keeping it up. She seems like she's killing it with everything that she decides to do. So, you know, what? nice job by you. All right, uh, so let's move on to the next artist this week. Um, only two artists. So we do have Sejong with Warning featuring a Little Boy. Uh, we call her the Dream Girl <laughs> because we are the Dream Girls. <laughs> she she is the Dream Girl, um, formerly of IOI, um, and I, don't know, I think we've gotten to know Sejong really well this year because of Uncanny Counter. So you and I watched that together, and yeah, very good. I relentlessly play the IOI song Dream Girls and <laughs> I hope that is your only association now with Sejong it is now <laughs> uh, let's talk about this song and the music video so what did you like about the, the song and what did you like about the music video Um, I love how cute the music video is and I think the song is deceptively cute <laughs> <laughs> because it's called warning and the uh, chorus is just like warning warning and you see like flashing lights but in a very cute environment <laughs> um it's a little like it's confusing but it's not bad confusing it's just like adding something extra yeah i think it's i mean it does have a very like quirky pop vibe to it and i think this is far closer to the type of personality Sejong depicts through uh, Variety, her vlog channel, and just like anything that you see her do that's not like scripted or it's not like controlled and like, you know, processed for like the camera. Um, not to say right. that we're, we have like so much access to Sejin that we know exactly who she is as a person. But I mean, like with Korean idols and entertainers, we tend to have a little bit more access to um their daily lives even if it's edited down in certain a certain way it's still pretty i would say pretty close to who they probably are and this song and music video probably represents more closely to kind of who she is kind of just like a laid back like oh this is me like being really weird (laughs) and like the five different copies of myself with the different moods i'm just like oh i can see that like all the different <laughs> foods. Um, yeah. How did you think about the way that they talked about it on the show? Um, I'm glad that they liked it. Uh, I mean, I understand that they showed hesitation towards the production, but um, considering this is because this is her first solo release, right? Like her first official title track uh no she did have a release last year with plant um this is her first release that's more of a poppy song Um, oh yeah plant and that entire album was not the entire album wasn't ballad but it was very like chill vibes just like Ah. winter like oh coffee shop music um and considering she was included on an ioi yeah like you if you didn't if you didn't know it you probably miss it because it's just a departure from like most of the other music she's ever done Mm, okay yeah i um because i definitely see what they were saying about like some of the audio didn't match up with the music video but like that kind of happens in a lot of (laughs) k-pop um i don't put it against her of course like she's just a performing artist but i did think that if she had i wouldn't say more of a budget just like more editing or just like more production into it it would definitely bump it up but she didn't really need it like this is a song to be listened to and it's very nice to listen to. I even started listening to the whole album because I remember other people saying it's good and it is good. It's very fun and also chill. <laughs> yeah, two words that capture Sajang really well. Fun and chill. <laughs> I think we can say that safely say that from uh, all, all the Sajang content that we've watched recently. Um, <laughs> any closing thoughts on just the Sejong in general? Um, we will have a longer segment a little bit later. That's a tease, everyone. Um, 
going in more depth of Sejong and Ayu, but um, any final thoughts about what the crew had said on the show about the music video? Uh, no. Very good stuff. Very interesting feature. <laughs> All right, so moving on now to uh, the Soju chart this week. Um, a very straightforward chart, I would say. So at number three, we have IU with Coin. Number two, we have Weekly with After School. And number one, IU with Lilac. So it looks like IU has two out of the three spots this week. Um, how are you feeling about this chart? And how are you feeling about Weekly sneaking in there between both IU songs? <laughs> I am not upset. Um all very good songs however <laughs> i think there's one song in particular that you and i both wanted on here both wanted to be covered and that would be jackson wings leave me loving you excellent song excellent music video <laughs> um i don't have a negative thing to say about that i think that's the theme today thank you warren positivity is the theme today <laughs> everyone we're doing it but I do understand because I mean the song is entirely in English. Yeah. There, there's a, a behind the scenes tagged on to the actual music video, um, so he does talk about like the the homage to Hong Kong China movies and filmmaking. So I think within the market of K-pop and the I guess the, the ultimate like umbrella directive of what we're the Soju Talk podcast typically covers, it wouldn't fit. But they did shout it out a little bit at the end, and they said it's very good. So, again, everyone... It is if, very good. If you can, <laughs> watch it. Um, I played the music video on in the background just because it's really nice to have on whenever, you know, whenever I can. So, um, It's such a good song. I would definitely put it as number one yeah. um, in my heart. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's... There, well, you know what? Let's save all that. I mean, we're we're gonna expand on it a little bit, so let's save a little bit of right. the Jackson talk for later. But, um, but I am glad that Lilac made number one. Yeah, it's probably my favorite this week. Yeah. Otherwise, and Warren even said that's his favorite song of the year. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, one of his favorite songs. Um, I mean, not to say that we can anticipate what's going to happen in the next three weeks, but it stands to reason. <laughs> Are you perhaps maybe making a recurring appearance? Ooh. Perhaps. I'm curious to see if it gets Spice King. <laughs> right? It, it enters the, the Hall of Spice. It's the retired Hall of Spice. Oh, man. Um, a quick side note for the Soju talk is a Soju chart this week is Brave Girls. Um, so the crew said they love the song. The crew said they have nothing but positive vibes towards Brave Girls, and I do too. <laughs> I think they've captured the hearts and souls of everyone who listens to K-pop and music and just likes a really nice comeback story. Um, they will be on Variety in the next couple of weeks as they mentioned on the show, with Knowing Brothers and Running Man. And then I didn't know about this. Um, just I typically don't follow the news in general. <laughs> but I guess they're going to have a new song in the summertime, so let's go! Yeah! Um, any closing thoughts on this week in music at the Soji Talk Nation? Good week. Excellent week. Good week. Love all the songs. Yes. All right, so let's move on to State of the Nation this week. Um, so typically with State of the Nation, they talk about what they've been up to for the first part, and then they have a game. So just a quick summary of this week for the crew. Very anime-heavy, as <laughs> it's as usual. Anita got into the mix a little bit, so that was kind of cool. I don't know if there's anything else to say, aside from <laughs> Doug is all it's a in. a lot of anime. <laughs> Um. Well, let me ask you. So, I uh, you see. Have do you still watch anime? Are you still big into anime? I've listened or <laughs> I've watched a, a lot of anime yeah. in my lifetime. Um, okay. this past year has mostly just been K dramas <laughs> because I had a lot of animes I was following that either ended or reached a point that I didn't care to watch anymore and i didn't see anything new that popped out until um 
this past week, I decided to get into a couple new things. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just interesting that Doug like has gone so heavy into like the anime world now, which, you know, power to him. But I'm just curious <laughs> to see how it hits listeners and people who don't may not watch anime or, or are curious to like start, right? Because I mean anime is a big world. It's yeah. hard to find like a place to like really begin. Um <laughs> But I think Doug has done a nice job to at least talk about his reintroduction into anime. So Again, like, it may be a little bit different from a person who's brand new to anime. However, I do feel like there's at least um, somewhat of a blueprint that he's laying out. Maybe he's not, like, unknowingly laying out for everyone who's curious about um, what to watch and how to watch things. Although, I do think he's kind of leaning into the degenerate side of anime right now. (laughs) (laughs) There were were some suspicious titles, but that's kind of a lot of um current anime is that they just sound really bad but they're actually very innocent <laughs> yeah it's they 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 definitely know how to get viewers with the topic, <laughs> so let's just put it that way right all right so let's move on to the world cup this week superpower world cup the worst superpower world cup um again not Ooh. going to go through every single matchup and round um but therese to you was there anything that stood out um, I, it was a little hard to remember that they were choosing the worst one. So between two, whichever one is the one you want, you have to throw away and you have to pick the one that you don't want. <laughs> um, an interesting matchup, uh, the invisible versus the bartender, <laughs> um, where they talked about the bartender being, um, make any drink you'd like, but it contains a drip of your pee (laughs) versus being invisible, but only in dark spaces. Um, Very interesting superpowers. (laughs) And also a little bit of toilet talk, which is always a fun time with the crew. (laughs) Very on brand. Yes, yes. I don't know which one I would have (laughs) chosen. As the worst one? Yeah, I I mean, I definitely think the bartender would be worse, right? I, like, I think I, the, the, I don't care. I would want to be invisible. Yeah, I think the bartender one, I would have to, like, do mental gymnastics to get used to the fact that there's pee in the drink. <laughs> I think eventually I could get to a point where it's like, it's fine. Um, But Doug immediately was like, it's sterile. It's fine. I'll drink my own pee. And it's like, mm, you said that very quickly. <laughs> this, uh, this this concerns me, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it does make sense. I mean, but th- I don't know. I do feel like there are things you can do with being invisible. There are uses for it. I can't think of it right now um, because all the things <laughs> that they mentioned were very valid. That like, yes, like you can do things as an invisible person, but you would also need to have the skill to like be able to rob a bank. So. Like, cut the power and enter the bank. Um, Right. (laughs) Yeah, I I imagine there are some things you can do with invisibility, but I I don't know. Why why would you choose invisibility over uh, being a bartender who drinks his pee? I don't see the downsides of being invisible at will. (laughs) I guess that's the only thing. Like, oh, yeah, there's the issue of, like, oh, maybe you have to get naked to be fully invisible. But... You can, like, assuming you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt or something, which I usually do, I live in Florida, you can make yourself invisible and hide the rest of your clothes, like hide your body. Yeah. That's not hard. Yeah, that does make sense. Or even just, like, becoming anonymous. Because, oh, Um, no, I can see your clothes, but who are you? (laughs) That is true. Like, you can't, yeah. Like, with the clothes situation and then being anonymous. Yeah, just giving that like an, like another like visual thought right now. It's like, hmm, maybe you can do more with it. But then again, I'm not as creative as you, so. But like the bartender, you can learn how to make any drink, unless it's talking about physically 
manifesting <laughs> a oh. drink just like snap and you have one in thin air that's pretty cool i mean that is true yeah they didn't make it <laughs> I mean, there are magical powers on this list, so I mean that is a fair assumption that that could be the case. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, the the unembarrassed. You know what I read that yeah. as? I read that what? as a being a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and honestly, I think there are a lot of advantages to being a sociopath. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the superpower is not that you are a sociopath. <laughs> well, I'll I'll give you this example. Oh, the Kim Dummy from Itawan class. She's a sociopath, mm-hmm. and yet she is quite successful, and she gets what she wants without <laughs> without consequence. And not to say that she doesn't have emotion, because she does feel things, but she is able to de- to compartmentalize it and detach herself from the actions that she does. So I feel like that is the unembarrassed. All right. Well, then you're making me nervous about what I had to say about it. What did you have to say about it, Therese? I'm looking at this description and it says dance in public without being ashamed, but the embarrassment is transferred to your friend. And I'm just over here like, isn't that what always happens? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like you go out with your friends and you hit the dance floor and you know what you're just feeling yourself you get into it and then your friends just sort of back away slowly <laughs> doesn't that happen to everyone i think no? your definition of the unembarrassed is really different from my definition of unembarrassed. <laughs> yeah well i've always said that you create your own embarrassment So if you decide that you're not embarrassed, then you can enjoy things much more. (laughs) You know, Therese, I'm, you know, you do you, you know, live your best (laughs) life. It feels, it sounds like you are. It seems like you have superpowers. So (laughs) this list perhaps may not apply to you because you already (laughs) have the best one. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting that it made it all the way to the end. Like I don't. I, yeah, same. Yeah. And I thought the same about the bird too. <laughs> Excuse me. I I didn't expect the bird to make it that far, but the more they talked about it, the more it made sense. I I can go in so many directions with this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, the first thing I like to say is very on brand. For, for those of you that know, you understand. I will not elaborate. <laughs> Second, you are physically altering yourself to be able to fly. Yeah. Whereas like everything else is more of an ability or like something that you can already possess and doesn't drastically affect who you are. Pinocchio is probably the closest, but I think they did say it, your nose goes back. So it's fine. Oh yeah, that's fine. But no, I <laughs> You are so you are literally becoming a bird and you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, because I can fly. And that's like the only thing that matters. <laughs> but you wouldn't really be a person anymore. Right. Like, what could you what could what could you accomplish? At, you know, never mind. That's like a, a, t- <laughs> it's a rabbit hole of like Okay, so uh, I don't know if you're familiar with an old book called The Animorphs. I am. But (laughs) now all of your life makes so much sense. (laughs) So for people who don't know, The Animorphs was a series of books that was about teenagers who met an alien and the alien gave them powers to transform into any animal they want with conditions of course and one of those conditions was like if you transform for too long you have to stay that animal forever or something and i always thought if i were a bird and i had just stayed a bird for the rest of my life worth it whatever (laughs) i get to fly (laughs) so yeah i'd be a monster but i'd be able to fly and you know what Maybe I could be the next cryptid. Perks in both ways. And this, everyone, <laughs> is the inception of how Therese 
He became a furry. Okay, let's move on. Um, any closing thoughts on? I'm not actually a furry. Too clear. On the state of the nation and World Cup or superhero power. I guess that's all. Well done. We did it. Um, you did have a final question. What would be your use of superpower? Superpower. Yes. This was a question asked by my roommate to me. Um. Like, if you have, like, apparently Doug has super hearing, which is really great. And I can sort of relate because my roommate said that my useless superpower would be um, that I can hear when eggs are done boiling, which is true. <laughs> so it's something you currently possess. Yes. So if you have a talent that you're like, man, th I've used this so many times in my life and it's so useful, but... Like, nobody else would care if this was a, an actual superpower. Yeah, I'm not talented. <laughs> I don't think I have one of those. <laughs> you have to. Like, I met someone who said that they ha are so talented, they can memorize the entire layout of any house they've been in. <laughs> okay, that's... Just... <laughs> like, really stupid stuff. That's not actually stupid. Like that that's quite useful. It's like you What would you use that for? Like you know your exits in case of an emergency or a fire? <laughs> I don't know many houses I would get lost in if there was a fire. Well, Maybe I haven't a... been in enough mansions. Exactly. Um I don't know what would mine be. I don't know, I guess retaining useless knowledge. Like yeah, I'm, that's a common one. Like, I'm half decent at trivia. I think you do a very good job of embarrassing people while making them feel good about themselves. <laughs> so, a sociopath. <laughs> no! <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> uh... Yeah. You have one. Think, You just don't know it. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a pretty astute observation <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't back it up i wouldn't like support it but i mean <laughs> so um, humble yeah i mean i mean if i think of one i'll i'll mention it somewhere but yeah <laughs> I, don't, I don't think i have a personal best super like best useless superpower superpower wow those are so hard to superpower say. yeah i mean <laughs> words are so hard right now but yeah i mean i think uh the world cups are great they're interesting uh unfortunately they may be on hiatus for uh for a while because kingdom is coming kingdom. around and they will be doing a kingdom. kingdom review segment next week so definitely looking forward to that all right Woo. so let's move on to the soju talk nations 1v1 segment uh we do have Teresa on um in the 1v1 segment we uh go in depth about one item theme concept within korean pop culture or entertainment or entertainment in general and we discuss um how it affects us and our deeper perspectives on this um, concept so the question i posed to to wow that was hard the question i posed to <laughs> therese this week is uh centered around idols and acting uh, yes. What do idols discover about developing a creative narrative to their careers through acting and scripted storytelling? So this came up because we had Ayu, we had Sejong, who have both become very successful actors in K-dramas and movies. And then we also did have Jackson with Leave Me Loving You, who has moved towards this creative scope of telling stories with a very mm -hmm. cinematic feel to them. So starting off, just your overall thoughts on idols and acting and the variety of creative endeavors idols will go through in their careers. Um, what do you, what are your overall thoughts and feelings about that? I'm not surprised that idols would get into acting because it, I think all of the entertainment industry is sort of encompassing where if you're a singer, you either want to be a singer to become an actor or you want to be, become an actor to become a model or you want to become a model. It, it, like you can go between all different forms of uh, on screen, on stage presences. And I'm very happy 
that this is a thing because you get to see different depths of your artist where their music might be more them, but their persona and their uh, character in a drama or something would be a different side of them that you'd never see because they're acting. It makes sense. I think this is also a reflection on the training system. Because with, yeah. with, tra- with the training system, you are trained for a number of years in a multitude of entertainment skills. So with idols, we immediately think singing and dancing. But there's also um, stage stage presence, uh, performance, um, how to look at the camera, how to find your camera, um, how how to carry yourself. Like, yes, it develops naturally for some. Yes, it develops longer, uh, over a longer period of time, even after... An idol has debuted. They're still working on a couple things here and there. But for the most part, they do have the foundational skills that could translate into acting. And I think it's really interesting that within Korean entertainment, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of go between the two mediums. And I want to ask... And even combining the two mediums where we've seen a lot of idols uh, take up musical roles. Yes. Exciting. Yeah. So even, even then to where... They can get on stage and do a musical. Um, who comes to mind right now is Dara, Sandara from 21. So she... Also, um, uh, <laughs> Young Jay from GOT7. GOT7. Very, very good pull, considering we're, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about one of his friends very soon. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to ask you with regards to IU and... Uh, We've recently watched Hotel de Luna together on the server, and Doug mm, had said yes. like, this is peak IU acting. How do you feel like? How do you feel like IU's acting, and her music, have combined to be, I don't know, reflective of her entire creative experience? So I am an OG IU acting fan. I got into IU through Dream High, <laughs> and that was quite the time. Um, I think she's developed herself. Um, she's grown up in many ways. So like when she started um, acting, when she started making music, she was very young and innocent. And throughout the years, she's taken on more roles and created more albums that become more and more mature um, and fit more of who she is. She's no longer that person that's uh, finding herself. She knows who she is and she's excited to do what she wants with her next life. Yeah, I definitely has a self-assurance about her where it's not a cockiness, but it's uh, a confidence that is very evident through her music. I mean, very successful right now with the two songs. But in acting and just anything that she decides to put herself in creatively. Um, speaking to Hotel de Luna specifically, it feels like she, her her main, I guess her main persona is a very, uh, I would say like sociopathic, to, to, <laughs> to, to, to stay on the theme. But like very, her characters, yeah. yeah. Very separate from emotion and very, um, very demanding as a person. But then there are times where it flashes back to a former version of herself where she's a little bit softer. She's a little bit more empathetic. And Mm. it's hard. Maybe not hard, but it's really a testament to her acting ability that she's able to jump between both of those personas within the same show. And oh, yeah, I, I just think I just feel like it's translated so seamlessly into her music and music videos where she gets in front of a camera and like you said she has that it factor that she turns it on and i think that Mm -hmm. has a lot to do with like the it factor like the totality of who she is as an entertainer and how she presents herself because she can transform right she's like a straight chameleon she can do anything and um i even watched the persona series on netflix that she did where each of the four episodes was her in a different character and you forget that she like played someone completely different in the last episode like it it starts off like oh she's a bratty little teenager to oh she's a heartbreaker to 
Like, it, it's so interesting that she can encompass these completely different personalities while still being herself. <laughs> Very talented individual. Do you feel like she's been able to separate who she is as an artist in music and acting? Or are we getting literally the best of both worlds with how um, she releases whatever project she does next? I to bet that she shows more of herself in her music and maybe acts a little more for the music video to make it entertaining. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know how what else we can say <laughs> that we haven't already <laughs> that positively um, shows our feelings for just like how uh, brilliant of a person Ayu is with yeah. what she's doing in entertainment right now. Um, but let's move on to Sejong, who is a di- at a different point in her career. She is an amazing vocalist. She is a great idol. Um, her music right now is still very young as far as like her own music. She's always been part of a group, but as of recently, um, the group is no longer. And she's branching out on her own, but she's also been doing a lot of acting. So prior to Uncanny Counter, she did have a couple smaller roles here and there, but this year, Uncanny Counter was wildly successful. And it kind of it showed an edgier side of Sejong that we haven't seen. And I think it's really interesting because Sejong is part of the generation of idols who are very access heavy. Where I mean, starting from IOI, like we're we were right in there with her as a trainee, and then going through the elimination show, and then everything that she did with Google Don, she had her own vlog channel. So we got to see more of her personality. But then with Uncanny Counter, she was able to be a different person. How did that strike That's... you? And like, what do you think about like that type of transformation for her? So for me, I didn't really know Sejong. I didn't listen to IOI in the past. Um, Uncanny Counter was the introduction of Sejong for me. And I remember asking you, I was like, is she not usually this like cool? <laughs> is she actually just like a Doric? <laughs> because she played it so well, that role of like, um, just like, knowing Nuna and <laughs> um, when you showed me some of the variety clips and like some of the old IOI stuff that she performed in, it was surprising. Um, and also like, it, well, it was a pleasant surprise because it made me realize like I can really appreciate her as an actress since she's able to switch roles relatively easily. <laughs> How do you feel like Sejong's forming her narrative now that she's I want to say this as positive as possible, in a way, restarting her journey as an idol. Um, I don't know. I don't think I know her well enough to say, but I'm, I think she's providing enough excitement to make me want to look forward to her next stuff. Yeah. Um, for me, Sejong has always been like the goofy like quirky like, I, don't, I don't i don't want to put too many like too many qualifiers into this where it's like oh like she's like the perfect girl but just like she's one of those like, <laughs> like those homies are just like oh like you are such a dork and then you kind of forget that she's an idol and you forget that she's very attractive and that she's this amazing vocalist and she can dance um because like unfortunately like since google don hasn't promoted in so long I actually forgot that, oh, she's a pretty, like, completely trained idol where she can dance and she could do everything on stage. Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, bringing this back to her song this week, she did a a comeback stage. I think it was a, um, it wasn't on one of the music shows. It was just an album release stage. And she had choreo. Mm -hmm. And it's been a number of years since I've seen Sejong do new choreo. And I'm just like, oh, she's really good. Yeah. She's really good. Um, and then just to kind of bring this all back to acting, she very much portrayed like who she was on stage as like her own personality. But 
Yeah, that was obvious. What you said in, about her uncanny counter character is that she's cool and edgy. I guess, like, for me, like, well, let me ask you, like, how do you feel like someone is able to find and tap into that, um, that skill to, to act in a way that is slightly different or slightly off-centered from who you are um, naturally? I think everyone has a secret desire to tap into their other personas because you definitely have um, those days that you feel like you don't want to talk to anyone or like you feel extra happy for no reason or you feel like a bratty little <laughs> teenager. So I think it's um, everyone secretly wants to find that part of themselves and really dive into it. Um, so I think that's what she's doing is it's just another side of her that we aren't able to see. And then like she up plays it over the top so that, you know, it's a real character. Yeah. And it's, it, it's fascinating how we decide our creative outlets are going to be expressed um, specifically with like Korean idols, Korean entertainers. There's just a, a myriad of avenues in which like they can express themselves once they have the foundational training. Um, and I do think it's interesting that Sejong is really thriving with her acting, but is still very much grounded in being um, a musician, someone who sings and dances. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say about Sejong? Any final things about her? Uh, her she acting? is a dream girl. <laughs> very nice. Uh, so let's move on now to Jackson Wang with... Um, Kind of an interesting take on this idol acting um, topic of discussion. So his music video, Leave Me Loving You, is a short film. I will go as far as to say it is a short film, absolutely, with the way that um, the behind-the-scenes production was captured, the, the amount of scripting and meetings, and just how he talked about wanting to create that narrative and story. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, as far as a filmmaking approach... Yes, this is slightly different from acting itself, like the grand like idea of like acting in a movie or a drama. But there was so much attention and care to detail to making this music video. What are your overall thoughts about Jackson as a filmmaker, storyteller, behind the camera person in the realm of acting? I think he definitely plays on his fandom very well because uh he has these artistic visions and they're not entirely unique, but they're relatable and you watch it and you like it. And um, I think if his fans know him very well, they know they will like his stuff in a way that a lot of fans are fans of their artists because they agree with their um, aesthetic or the way they think about things. So I think this was very good. I mean, even back from 100 Ways, I thought it was a very interesting concept. And I'm happy that he kept going with it, but took little twists and turns along the way. How do you interpret the story that Jackson is telling between these three songs? Um, because he did say Leave Me Loving You is the third of the trilogy. Right. Right. So it started with 100 Waves and then into Pretty Please with Galantis and now Leave Me Loving You. And um, the first one was him like finding his lost lover and then being with her forever. The second one was him like trying to win over this girl. And the third one is him sort of not really losing the girl, but not even having her. And I think it was it's interesting that he went sort of backwards from the normal romance plot that everyone's used to of, Oh, we got it. We know this girl, we got to try and win her over and then we're with her forever. And in this case, it's the opposite. It's like, Oh, I love this girl. And then I don't. And he is the actress, the same actress for all three to sort of combine that trilogy, which works really well. Cause I think they have good chemistry and it was, sad <laughs> watching them in order and being like oh okay i guess that's the end <laughs> i think there is a uh, a certain fantasy 
to how we approach love and romance. Um, and I do think that the three songs and music videos portray the different aspects of the, and the different degrees in which we all experience those things. Leave Me Loving You specifically is a story of someone who is your relatable, normal, typical person, right? Or they, um, they, have, a, they have a day job and they come across people every now and then, and sometimes they come across a person, or if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm projecting myself into this, right, like, I will come across a person who I feel like will change my life, whether that's romance or whether that's some other profound way. But the, sometimes the stories we tell ourselves and make up for ourselves don't live up to the reality because there is a disconnect. And I think right. Jackson captured that exceptionally well with the first part of the music video being this love story where it's like oh you follow this story in a very natural way that most love stories would would follow um like the structurally and then mm -hmm. it, it flips where it's like oh she was never actually there i mean he didn't say it at the end of the music video and the behind the scenes it was all of his all his imagination right and, and i think there is a grounding factor to how we should try to live in a certain reality of ourselves. Yes, we mm. should always try to hope for the best and try to hope that love springs eternal and that we can find something that's very um, meaningful. But also understand that daydreaming about things isn't necessarily actively looking and searching for what that is. And yeah. <laughs> I think I think with Jackson, and I, I'll like try to equate this like to his career and what I know about like how he talks about um, being creative is that he constantly works like so much. <laughs> and there, from the perspective of someone on the outside looking in, we'd like to think like that's an idealized life. Like he's in the spotlight. He's a great dancer. He's well accepted in multiple countries, but ultimately none of that is attainable to any of us if we're just daydreaming about it yeah and i think there's definitely um that what you're talking about where it's basically bringing you back to reality the whole trilogy does that too because 100 ways was a fantasy a straight fantasy and then um pretty please was a hong kong movie kind of old school style and this is the closest one to modern day where it's just a guy working in a kitchen and meeting this girl. So it's bringing you back to reality, which is upsetting. <laughs> yeah, it's upsetting, but there's, um, I mean- there, there... Take me back to my fantasy <laughs> romance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but there is, there is still a sense of optimism there at the end, right? Because. I mean, we do see at the very end. Is this there? Well, yeah. so I always like to think of the end of a story like that, where yes, like even if you don't get the girl or you don't get the person that you're pining over, the story ends in so far as what you're watching, but the story continues as far as the lives of the people within that story, whether fictional or real. Sometimes yeah, you're it's still a dishwasher in a kitchen. But <laughs> the story continues, and we don't know what what this how how this this series of events will set him on a different track now a different path in his life yeah so that's my sense of optimism for something like this where it's like you can go through this type of heartbreak you can go through something as emotionally difficult but your story will continue and I, I, that's how i interpret the the end scene with the um, the couple driving away and him kind of left in the back but he's still looking through, um, I guess, that viewpoint of mm -hmm. something moving into the future. And it's up to him to decide if he wants to, at least mentally, follow into into the footsteps of moving forward or hold himself back. And I guess like that's where my, my optimism is, where it's like, yes, it's very sad. But I think these sad moments are what helps us reflect into trying to do better and trying to do more. I guess you're right. Um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, all, all of this is kind of like tied into the, the idea of idols and acting. 
And for me, like I always see acting as one and the same with filmmaking and long form storytelling or short sor- short form storytelling, depending on like the medium and the type of story that needs to be told. Um, but I also feel like with idols, it's it's really just like how they are able to structure their careers and like what they want to tell as far as their their own personal story. Um, a lot of idols mm-hmm. have a very similar story with just the way that the music plays out literally and figuratively <laughs> um and i feel like acting is a different kind of expression that also yeah, like it, leans into like the strengths of um the musical background you're right and i think jackson was a good one to end on because he's like um as far as the last uh artist we've discussed he's definitely less experienced in acting like maybe he got some tips from Jin Young or something, but um, he manages to show like more of who he is because he seems like a very sweet guy in general. So in his music video, he's acting more like himself of just a sweet guy. <laughs> um, but it's still translating well in the art he wanted to present. So it's like he had this idea and he acted it without having to act too much and get that idea across completely. Yeah. Well put, Therese. Um, Any other closing thoughts um, about idols, acting, filmmaking, storytelling within the world of Korean entertainment? No. All right. Um, Well, that was our little discussion, our 1v1 discussion on idols and acting. Um, we're going to move on now to our weekly check-in, our closing thoughts. Uh, what are you looking forward to next week, Therese, in K-pop, the community, and in life? Kingdom, kingdom, (laughs) kingdom. Uh, definitely kingdom. And then also, um, JB of God7, um, I don't know if many people know, but he makes his own music on SoundCloud and stuff under the name Def, like definition, uh, and he works under that persona with an R&B hip hop group called Offshore. So the artists on this team have participated in songs such as Last Got Seven Title Track, Last Piece, and their previous albums Crazy. They also, some of the artists worked on Mm for Kai and Beckham's Amusement Park. They're just a really good team. I love the music they make and they're all coming out with an album called Scene Number Three. Technically it's already out, for Korea, but um, in international platforms, it won't be available until midnight, April 1st. And I am so excited to listen to it. I really love what they do. Go listen. Offshore. Scene number three. Nice. And you said the type of music is more R&B, hip-hop, lo-fi. Is that correct? Yes. Nice. and that Very is... different from idol music. Okay. <laughs> well, that is my jam. I do have an R&B, yeah. hip-hop. Uh, Asian Grooves is my uh, playlist that I, <laughs> I like. because you know it's a groove but it's like primarily Asian artists which um, I don't think we've talked about when I'm on the show yet but um, that is a really big and important like identifying factor for me with music where it's um, 88 Rising is the, ex- the prime example where it's like they want to highlight and showcase Asian artists from different parts of the world through the mm-hmm. lens of like ooh, not western friendly but like um like a western like approach where it's like oh these songs actually compete far better than whatever is on the billboards right now as far as like quality and depth and like the ability of the artist so um i am always down for that type of music and that style it's definitely um easy to transition from one artist to the other like if they know each other if they're promoting each other so i think that's how we end up getting into a lot of asian artists it's like oh i only know these people because i listen to got seven and i enjoy jb and his music and then it just sort of offshoots into other branches and then those people will know more people (laughs) it's like an endless chain of good music yeah it's the spotify algorithm just doing its work well done Um... otherwise I am probably going to buy Bravely Default 2 and play that. I'm excited. I love JRPGs. You gamer, you. Such a gamer. (laughs) 
Um, for me, nothing in life, nothing in the community-ish. Well, no, I'll take that back. So we are finishing Hotel de Luna this week. Oh, yeah. Um, Aura and Delmonic want to do like a chocolate eating hangout. Ooh, yeah. So we all buy chocolate <laughs> and we talk about what chocolate we have. I don't know how that happened yesterday. That was amazing. So. Chocolate mukbang. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> yeah, but, totally. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think we're going to see each other. I think we're just going to, like, buy chocolate. Go well, how else chocolate. are we going to eat chocolate together unless we can see each other eating chocolate? <laughs> I don't think... I think we can find a way. <laughs> well, like, I could be eating a carrot and tell you it's a chocolate bar, and you wouldn't know the difference. I mean, therein lies the trust of a, a friendship, right? Or... <laughs> I mean, I take your word for it. If you decide to violate that I'm going to need to see this chocolate that you are eating. If you violate our friendship and our trust, then that is on you. I will I... be earnestly eating a piece of chocolate when this happens. <laughs> Just one piece. One piece. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they post a lot of pictures of different chocolate from that's available in Canada. And I'm just like, well... Only like half of that's available in the United States, so great. <laughs> we have Hershey's. Uh, that's it. It's it's fine. We'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, and then K-pop, um, Rose will have her music video release for Gone, which I'm still conf- like curious why like it took so long, and if there's going to be any more than what we already saw. So, mm. um, I'm still listening to Gone. So that's probably like my favorite song of the year. And yeah, that's probably all, all the things I'm looking forward to in life and K-pop. Um, any closing thoughts for the week, Therese? Anything you want people to look out for? Kinga! <laughs> Go root for Stray Kids! Yeah, it'll be really fun. Uh, a lot of drama about the yeah. show already. Hopefully they edit around it and it doesn't translate to the show because honestly I just want the show. <laughs> like I don't want to know <laughs> behind the scenes crap. That's not that's not my life. That's just not no. me. Like I don't care as long as I mean the artists are if treated. it's net, we know that it'll be hidden. So yeah. <laughs> like as long as you're telling me like the artists aren't being like like withheld of food and water and bathroom oh my breaks. gosh like uh, just treat him treated humanely and paid <laughs> uh, accordingly and that's fine like okay like i don't need the drama my life isn't about drama i get dramas from what i watch from K dramas. yeah i think we had enough drama from 2019 <laughs> <sighs> we're just done with k-pop drama Let's get us good music, music, please. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining me this week. It's uh. Thanks it's, for it's, having. It's been me. nice having you the past two weeks. Um. Hopefully, Koala comes back next week. She she did say she's still very swamped with schoolwork. Um. We're actually gonna try to record something separate on a, on the feed. So hopefully, we get that mm-hmm. up in the next couple of days. Um. But yeah, thank you for listening to the Soju Talk Nation podcast, episode 12. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. And continue the conversation on the Soju Talk K-pop podcast Discord. This has been the Soju Talk Nation for Therese. This is Crispy. Bye. Bye.